Welcome to day one of calculus. When you hear people talk about calculus and what it is, one of the standard answers is that calculus simply is the study of rates of changes. I like to add in, it's also the study of volumes. And that's really from the two places where we pull all of our topics. There's going to be differential calculus and integral calculus. And over the course of the year, we'll be learning much about what goes into those two buckets. Many things change in our world, and calculus is used to study those rates of change, those different rates. You have learned lots of math up until this point that we will use to paint a colorful picture of the world of calculus. And it's also important to know that calculus is used all over the place. You see it in physics, biology, chemistry, in business, in medicine, and in many, many other fields. As to who invented calculus, and I'm air quoting here, and you can't really see that, uh, there are two people that are credited, most credited, with working on early calculus and quote unquote inventing it. Is math invented or is it discovered? It's a good topic to discuss. You have Isaac Newton and Gottfried von Leibniz. Uh, I recommend reading about the two. They are fantastic people. So let's get into it. The main type of function we'll be working with for the time being and very frequently throughout the entire year is a polynomial function. Polynomial functions are the sum of power functions, sum of power functions. So let's stop there. What is a power function? A power function is something of this form, ax to the p, ax to the p, where each power is a whole number. And just so that you remember what a whole number is, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So not fractions starting at 0, going up. So this number has to be a whole number. What can this coefficient be? Well, it can be any real number. Any number that lives on the real no line is a real number. So for example, a power function could be x squared, or 2x to the 52nd, or pi x to the 15th. Anything like that is a power function, and a polynomial is a sum of power functions. So it's more than one added together. So you could have this one, this one, and this one, all put together and you would end up with a polynomial. We can name it anything we want. Let's say p of x is equal to pi x, not squared, what did I say, to the 15th plus 2x to the 52nd plus x squared. Now we'll talk more about ordering and uh, how to simplify poly uh, polynomials, but that is a polynomial simply because the powers are whole numbers and the coefficients are real. Now keep in mind that many things you've seen before Many, many functions you've seen before are polynomials. y equals x plus 1. Those are, each of these things, are these are power functions right here. What is it? Well, what's the coefficient of x? Well, it's going to be 1x to the first power. That is a power function. What about 1, though? Well, that's just going to be x to the 0 power. x to the 0 power. Remember, whole numbers do, cont whole numbers do contain the number 0. So a polynomial function is just a collection of power functions, and it's, uh, 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 it's a sum, is what it said, but just remember, the coefficient in front could be negative. So for example, the 2 here, that could be negative 2. That could be negative 2, in which case, when you add it together, all it would change over here is this would change right here to a minus. Now a rational function is a function of the form p of x over q of x, where p and q of x are both polynomial functions. So it's a ratio of polynomial functions. Ratio, an easy way to remember that, rational, first five letters, first five letters, ratio. So it's a ratio of two polynomial functions. So for example, you might see 2x squared plus 5x over x squared plus 1. That is a rational function because both the numerator and the denominator are both polynomials. So if you have one polynomial dividing into another, that's a rational function. Again, just about everything you've seen happens to be a rational function. So for example, 1 over maybe x plus 1, remember, that's a polynomial, that's a polynomial. So this is a rational function. We'll be looking at a little bit more esoteric of a set of functions, ones that look like this. Uh, their properties, how to graph them. But just remember, a polynomial function is a collection of power functions, a, x to the p, a collection of them, some, some could be negative, 
and a rational function is a ratio of two polynomials. So in our study of rational functions, we need to know what they look like and what type of behaviors do certain things. So we need to remember some terminology. So we're going to draw a function with all of these properties right here, all of these properties. Let's break it down piece by piece. Let's look at this first one right here. That says the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, because of that positive, of f of x is infinity. So what that means is as x gets bigger, so that means as the function moves to the right. And right now we don't know what the function does, but these limits will help us determine what it does. Meaning, I'm moving to the right right now. I'm also moving to the right like this. I'm still moving to the right. We don't know what the function looks like. All this says is as x gets to 0 from the right, so as it gets closer to 0 from the right, the function goes to infinity, meaning the output goes to infinity the y value goes to infinity. So in this case, it means that as x goes, let's say this is x equals 0, as it gets to 0 from the right, it means it's going to spike up. You are approaching 0 from the right. This would be the left. Hey. So it means as you come in from the right. This one means something very similar right here. As you approach 0 from the left, as you approach 0 from the left, so let's say this is x equals 0, also known as the y-axis. I can almost write clearly. The y-axis. As you approach from the left, it goes to negative infinity, so it's going down. So as you approach from the left, you're going this way, it's going down. What does this mean right here? That means as x goes to infinity, so as x gets infinitely big, as x goes really far to the right, as x goes really far to the right, it approaches 2, it approaches 2 from above. The output is 2 from above. The output is 2 from above. So that means here's y equals 2. As x gets really big, what's it doing? It's going down to 2. This is the positive side of the output of 2, and this is the negative side. So it's approaching 2 from above, a 2 from above. Similarly, you have this fourth one right here. So this says as x goes to negative infinity, meaning as x goes this way, it approaches 2. So let's say that's y equals 2. It approaches 2 from below, like this. So what we're going to do now is take all four things and come up with a function that does those things. So where does x equal 0? We were talking about x equals 0 here and here. And remember, x equals 0 is the y-axis. So that's right here. Oh, here's the y-axis right there. So if we take this behavior right here and generalize it, it means it's approaching 0 from the, when it goes from z to 0 from the right, it spikes up like this. That's that one. So that's this piece right here. So then you have this one. As you approach 0 from the left, as you approach 0 from the left, it goes to negative infinity. So it's going to go down. And then, let's go to the third one here. As x gets infinitely big, it approaches 2 from above. So you'll notice I went, it's a little above 2 right there, so let's move this up a little bit, which we're totally allowed to do. Let's take this, move it up a little bit, because as this goes to infinity, as x goes to positive infinity, there's this 2 right here. You see that? And what are we doing? We're getting infinitely close from above. And then, oh, I think I have another highlighter. Let's see here. Oh, there's a blue. Hey, nice. There's this one right here. There's this, which is what happens as x goes to negative infinity. As x gets really, really small, as x gets really, really small, it approaches 2, the y value of 2, y equals 2. So remember, this is y equals 2. It approaches it from below. So then we're going to take it blue like this, and it approaches. So that's one thing it could be. Now, could this function go berserk in between? Like, could you have a lot of crazy things happen here and here? Absolutely. It could go down and up. We just have pieces of it. It could look like a lot of different things, but this is a visual representation of those four properties all in one place. So let's go in reverse now. Let's look at a picture and see what the end behaviors look like or the behaviors of the uh, function look like. So as x goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, as x gets infinitely big, so that's as x gets infinitely big, that's over here as x goes to infinity. So you're looking at what does the function do? 
Well, it looks like it's getting, as this gets x goes to infinity, it's getting infinitely close to that line. And what is that? Well, that's y equals 1. And are you approaching from above or below? We're approaching from above, so what's going to happen is this will be approaching 1 from above. What about going to negative infinity as you go to this direction? Well, it's very similar, except it's approaching 1 from below. Now it gets a little tricky. There's going to be a few more here. What does this mean? It means as x goes to negative 2 from the left, because it's minus 2 with that little negative sign up there, as x goes to negative 2 from the left, that's this right here, as it goes to negative 2 from the left. So what's happening to the function? Well, it's going, going down. It's going infinitely down like that. It's going down. You can Im imply that there are arrows on all of these, by the way. It's going to keep going. So it's going infinitely down as it approaches 2, negative 2 from the left. So that's going to be negative infinity. Cycle back here. This is negative 2 from the right. That's going to be this part right here, negative 2 from the right. So what's that? It's pointing infinitely up. So that's going to be positive infinity. What about this? This is 3 as x goes to 3 from the left, as x goes to 3. Well, 3 is right here. 3 from the left, it's going infinitely down. So that's minus infinity. And then x approaches 3 from the right. That's this right here. x approaches 3 from the right, it's going infinitely up. So that's positive infinity. So you can go from the picture to the end behavior. So we've drawn a function given end behavior. We've described the end behavior with a function when given the graph of a function. What happens if we are just given the function in this form? And as a side note, I've been calling this end behavior. End behavior really is just when the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity. This technically is an end behavior, but I kind of group it in the same place. Um, we're really talking about just evaluating the following, but you can call it kind of asymptotic behavior uh, or what happens as you get infinitely close to something. Okay, so looking at this function, first we need to find all vertical asymptotes. Okay, so where does this come from? It comes from where the function is undefined and there are really two quote-unquote illegal operations. Not going to have any square roots of negative numbers like negative 1. That'd be i, but it means it's not real, or dividing by zero. Well, there are no square roots, there are no radicals in that function right there, so we're really just looking at looking out for dividing by zero. So for this function right here, f of x, I'm just writing it again, x plus 4 over x minus 3, are there any numbers that make the denominator zero? Well, you could just maybe know the number, it's going to be 3, but how would you find that algebraically? Well, when is the denominator zero is the same thing as answering that. So that would be x equals 3 by adding 3 to both sides. So there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. We'll learn a lot about vertical asymptotes, but one key thing is a vertical asymptote is a vertical line. This one is at x equals 3. Surprising. One key element to vertical asymptotes is that you can't cross them. What are the end behaviors? Now, the end behaviors are going to be what happens as the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. What happens there? And what happens as the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x? Meaning, what happens to this as x gets infinitely big or infinitely big in the negative direction? So, for simpler limits like these, you can actually do them with logic. So let's take a look at this. What is this going to mean? Well, let's just replace the f of x here. Let's do the first one. What happens as x goes to infinity for this expression? Remember, infinity is not a number, it's an idea, so as x gets infinitely big, what happens to the numerator? Well, the numerator gets infinitely big plus 4, and the denominator gets infinitely big minus 3. So the top is getting really, really, really big, so it's going. you can think of it as infinity, infinitely big plus 4, and infinitely big minus 3. That is going to get closer and closer to it's about 1. You can think of it as, what's a billion and four over a billion minus three? A billion and four over a billion minus three. The key thing to think about is, is that going to be a little bit bigger than one or a little bit less than one? And what you can do for this logic is think of it in terms of big numbers again. So let's say it's, let's say a thousand plus four 
over 1,000 minus 3. Well, that's going to be about 1, but what's bigger? That's a little bit bigger than this, so this is going to be a little bit bigger than 1, so it's going to be a little bit bigger, meaning 1 plus. What about the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the same thing? That's the other end behavior. Well, you can think of it as, well, quote, negative infinity plus 4 and negative infinity minus 3. If you wanted concrete numbers, you could say it as negative 1,000 plus 4 over negative 1,000 minus 3. Well, that's going to be about 1 because the negatives will cancel. Uh, but in this case, you end up with what, negative you know, 996. This is negative 1,003. The negatives cancel. So you have 996 over 1,003, which is bigger. Well, the denominator is a little bit bigger than the numerator, so this is going to be a little less than 1. So this one will be 1 minus. So when you state the end behaviors, you're going to state them as following. So b, the answer would be the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is 1 plus, and the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x 1 minus, that's to negative infinity, to negative infinity right there. So just to be super clear, when, they, when they're asking for the end behaviors, we're just looking at x going to positive infinity and negative infinity, not the asymptotic behavior in the middle here, which also can be described similarly right here, but not, uh, uh, but they are not end behaviors. Part C asks us to find all the x and y intercepts, the x and y intercepts for the function, and I just wrote it over here. So the x intercepts are when y is 0, and the y intercepts are when x is 0. Key things to remember, there can be at most one y-intercept. There could be an infinite number of x-intercepts. So how do you go about solving these? Well, let's do the x-intercepts first. That's when y is 0. So you literally just solve this right here. When is this true? Well, you can cross multiply here and end up with 0 times x minus 3 equals 1 times x plus 4. And you end up with, oh, it's not x. It's going to be 0 equals x plus 4, so x equals negative 4. That's the uh, x value of the intercept. The intercept is a point itself, so the point is going to be negative 4, 0. So that's where the function crosses the x-axis. What about the y-intercept? Well, that's when x is 0. So what do you do then? You just plug in 0 into, so you have 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 3. Well, that's going to be 4 over 3, negative 3. So that's a, remember, that's a y value. So the y-intercept will be 0, 4 over negative 3. So that's your y-intercept. And this is your x-intercept.